Man, this is your guy, Tone Deshells the second from Chalk It Up. <clears throat> from, wow, man. Good morning, NFC East. Excuse me, man. See, this is the problem when you do a lot of different shows. This is your guy, Tone Deshells the second from Good Morning NFC East, filling in for Jeff Kerr. And Eagles fans, we got to call it like it is. This is something we have to deal with. This is something that we have to live with, right? Make sure you guys smash that like button. Make sure you guys continue to stay engaged. I'm going to need your help to get through this one. This is going to be a tough show to do this morning. It's early. It's 7 o'clock where I am. Maybe it's earlier where you are. But this is going to be a tough one to deal with. Eagles fans, <laughs> your Philadelphia Eagles lost in the Super Bowl to the Kansas City Chiefs, 38 to 35. Where do I begin? Where does it end? Let's just start with the feel good, right? Because there's so much negativity to pull from this game. Let's just start with the positives. Jalen Hurts did everything he could to win that game. Jalen Hurts probably played maybe the best game I've seen him play. He made all the throws, made all the right decisions. But he made a crucial mistake early in the game. But he bounced back. That's the thing to keep in mind, you guys. Yes, it's easy to say Jalen Hurts blew that game with the costly penalty. As you guys can see, I'm not in my usual digs. I'm currently broadcasting live from Ocean Casino Resort. Jalen Hurts did everything that he could to win that game. So I don't want people just to take the low-hanging fruit. We're going to talk about this game from top to bottom. We're going to try to break this down the best way we know how. I'm going to hold it down the best way that I know how. But the reality is the Eagles lost. We're not going to make any excuses. We're not going to talk about the refs at the end of the game. It happened. I didn't like the call, but it happened. But we're not going to pretend like this game was lost on that play. Offense came in and did their job. Offense put up 35 points. But that's the thing about the Kansas City Chiefs. You have to make sure you kill them and you bury them, but they couldn't do it. Like I said, Jalen Hurts, I feel personally that Jalen Hurts did everything that he possibly could have to win that game, to win that game. Welcome to the show, B. Lizzle, Go Sixers, Hawk Mercenary, Robert Jakowski. Welcome to the show. Hulk Mercenary says, I'm proud of Jalen, but that defense in the second half wasn't enough. You're right, it wasn't. It wasn't. And I think that's the story of the game more than Jalen's turnover. Like I said, let's let's really go through some of the numbers real quick because there were if you look at these stats, you would have thought the Eagles won the game. If I would have told you the Eagles would lead the game in time of possession, 35 minutes to 24 minutes, if I would have told you the Philadelphia Eagles would have had more passing yards, more yards per pass, more total yards, more total drives. If I would have told you the Philadelphia Eagles were more efficient on third down, more efficient on fourth down, ran 72 plays to the Kansas City Chiefs 50, 53 plays, if I would have told you all those things, what do you think the Philadelphia Eagles would have won the game? If I would have told you all those things, when do you think the Eagles would have won the game? Right? More total yards. Dominated time of possession. Yet the game was still lost. Did we spot them seven points? Yes, the Eagles spotted them seven points. And this wasn't something that I was, I was particularly fond of, but it happened. And Jalen Hurts responded immediately. So it's hard for me to personally say that lost them the game. This was a game that was very obvious from the start. Mitt Diggity, you're right. The Chiefs did exactly what we thought they would do. They, they dink and dunk their way down the field. They were melodical. They were surgical. And they did exactly what they do. You want to know the one group that came out of character today? The Eagles defense. 
like I said, we're gonna we're gonna get into the defense. We're gonna break that down. But I gotta say, Jalen Hurts has come such a long way. All playoffs, people were saying, damn, Jalen, can he pass the rock? Is that shoulder bothering him? Will he be able to go blow for blow with Patrick Mahomes? People had their questions. People had their concerns. But the reality is, Jalen Hurts came to ball. He came to ball. I can't look at Jalen Hurts and say, he's the reason they lost the game. I can't say that when you go into halftime up 24 to 14, a double-digit lead. A double-digit lead. Now the Philadelphia Eagles have joined terrible company. The Philadelphia Eagles have joined the Atlanta Falcons as as two of the only teams to blow a double-digit lead in the Super Bowl. Double digits. Now, was it as egregious? As the, as the Atlanta Falcons back in the day? No, because the Atlanta Falcons were up like about 20 points. That's something that that's something you you can't you can't give up. But the Eagles had a 10-point lead going a 10-point lead going into the second half. Right? So in theory, you have enough buffer, you have enough space to, to maybe make a mistake and still maintain control of the game. Offense sputtered a bit in the second quarter in, in, in the second half in the third quarter. But I can't sit here and say flat out that the, that the offense lost the game. I can't say that. That's lazy to me. I can't say Jalen Hurts didn't show up. That's lazy to me. We got to dig deeper than that. Jalen Hurts. Jalen Hurts' numbers from last night. 27 for 38. Let's make sure we do some math really quickly. I want to make sure we get the percentage up. He went 27 for 38. Jalen Hurts completed 71% of his passes last night. 71%. 27 for 38. 304 passing yards. Average eight yards in attempt. One passing touchdown. 103 passer rating. 15 rushing attempts. 70 rushing yards. Averaged almost five yards a carry, three rushing touchdowns. That's four total touchdowns on the day. Four total touchdowns on the day. 374 yards of total offense. Jalen Hurts did his job. He did everything he could have done to win that game. When the, when the chips were down, he tied the game. Got the two-point conversion. Can't forget that. Devontae Smith showed up as well. Seven catches, 100 yards. Longest catch of the day, 45 yards. Had nine targets. A.J. Brown, six catches, 96 yards. One touchdown. Caught a bomb over Baghdad. Dallas Goddard came, came to play. Big catch after big catch after big catch. Showed up. Close, but no damn cigar. Jalen completed 71% of his passes, y'all. How did they lose the game? And like I said, we're going to get into the nitty-gritty of why they lost the game. But I got to start with the positive because at the end of the day, you guys, we got to eat this one. We got to live with this one. This is, this, this is a funeral we have to attend. This is something we're not going to get over. This is something we're going to have to live with. This is a funeral that we have to attend. We got to eat this one. We got to eat this one. Also, by the way, you guys, let me know if my audio sounds good. I'm using the AirPods today. Like I said, this isn't my usual digs right now. I'm on the road. And I wanted to make sure we still got the show out to you guys because Jacob Sports cares. We want to make sure we still got the show out to you guys. So let me know if my audio sounds fair. I understand that I don't have my usual setup. But again, this is something we have to live with. And it's going to, I'll be honest with you guys. Y'all know, y'all know how I give it up. You guys know how I give it up. I am going to have to work through some things mentally, emotionally, spiritually. <laughs> this isn't going to be something I'm going to be able to just get over because they were so close. So close. But still, there were moments where I thought something doesn't feel quite right. 
something didn't feel right at all. I'm not going to look at Nick Sirianni and say he lost his game. I'm not going to look at Shane Steichen. I'm just not, I, I can't. I'm looking at Jonathan Gannon. Jonathan Gannon. Did this, you, okay, so help me understand this. The Eagles, let, let, oh, matter of fact, let's, let's, let's put it in this perspective, right? The Philadelphia Eagles defense didn't show up in any capacity. Y'all want to know what the defense was? The defense was the offense sustaining long drives. That was, that was the defense. The defense was keeping Patrick Mahomes off the field. That defense was well-rested. That defense had all the energy in the world. That defense lacked poise. That defense lacked awareness. That defense looked like they were unraveling in real time. That defense imploded on itself. Too often we saw, you know what? I don't know what you call that route that Juju Smith-Schuster ran. I'm not sure what you call that route. But he... But he cut in, and then he and then he faked it out. They, the Chiefs were doing relatively simple things. They was doing a little bit of motion. They would have the they would have the receivers fake like they're running an in route, and they cut out to the boundary, wide open. Sky Moore, wide open. Kadarius Tony, wide open. Juju Smith Schuster, wide open. Stick routes. Thank you, B. Thank you, B. Lizzle. Thank you. A slanting out. Thank you. I appreciate you guys for that. A stick rope. How, how does that happen? I'm I'm seeing stick route. I'm seeing I'm seeing whip route. I'm seeing slanting out. But you guys know what I'm talking about. That's the bottom line, right? You guys know exactly what I'm talking about. So I appreciate y'all for adding context. But again, I'm looking at the defense. Hassan Reddick, where were you? We were spicing you all week, my brother. The D line, where were they? I'm not. I'm not going to call specific guys out, man. This was this this was an this was a defensive effort. This was an entire defensive effort. I want to go through some situations that stick out to me. I believe that in that third quarter, when the Eagles had the ball. When they scored the three points, they needed a touchdown there. That was a moment where you needed a touchdown. That was a moment. Jacob Perry says, can't take away what, what the defense again accomplished this year, but I can't stand his scheme and lack of adjustments. Bummer bowl. Jalen Hurts is a stud. Pay that man's future. Pay that man. The future is bright in Philly. You know what? I got to say this. I got to say something about Jonathan Gannon because all year we've talked about the flaws of this defense. All year, the numbers said they were a top five defense, right? That's what the numbers said. But the numbers don't always tell the whole story. And that's why I try to, and that's why I'm not really a stat guy. That's why I don't, that's why I don't rely solely on stats to tell the story of the game. The stats. Don't tell the whole story with Jonathan Gannon. If you look at the stats and only the stats, you would think Jonathan Gannon played a good game or called a good game. You would think Jonathan Gannon had a great season. You would think that. You would, and also the punt, Carlos. I forgot about that. We're going to talk about all those things. Thank you, guys. But the, you would look at the stats and it will tell you, oh, Jonathan Gannon had a hell of a season. That's not the case because all year long we saw the flaws in his defense. We saw the flaws. We saw the limitations. We saw the we saw the the flaws and the in the philosophy. Did we not? Did we not? And we had a thought to ourselves: This is going to cost us in, in in a situation where it matters the most. Even with special teams, we talked about it all year. There's going to be a moment where special teams cost this team. There's going to be a moment where special teams cost this team a game. And look what happened. Sky Moore put the Chiefs in prime position to score a touchdown. John DeGannon's scheme showed too much respect to the Kansas City Chiefs. Let me ask you guys this question. Did Jonathan Gannon 
show too much respect to the Kansas City Chiefs? Did he allow them to do whatever they wanted out there? Did he play fearful? Let me know. Did he play fearful? Because if you ask me, he did. He showed entirely too much respect, too much reverence for Patrick Mahomes in that defense. You had Patrick Mahomes and those guys on the ropes. And I'll say this as well. This is me going back to offense. You can make an argument that if Jalen Hurts doesn't fumble that ball, the Eagles go up 21-7 to instead of giving up a touchdown and the game is tied 14-14. to You can make an argument for that because the Chiefs showed no ability to stop the Philadelphia Eagles defense or offense, excuse me. The Chiefs showed no ability. The Chiefs showed no ability to, to stop that Eagles defense, right? Or stop that Eagles offense, excuse me, you guys. Jalen Hurts in the offense was moving the ball at will, at will. And when Jalen Hurts turned the ball over, he gave them three points. You can't do that with Patrick Mahomes. You just can't. But that's not why they lost the game. We got We have to talk about it because it happened. But that's not why they lost the game, Philadelphia. That's not why they lost the game. And people that really understand football will tell you that. Yeah, you can't turn the ball over. It was the only turnover of the game. They lost the turnover battle. Therefore, they lost the game. But that's not why they lost that game. I personally don't think that's why they lost that game. They lost that game because defense couldn't show up. The only person that got out coached was John Gannon. Nick Sirianni didn't get out coached. Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen was cooking Spagnola or Spagnola, whatever, whatever, whatever his name is. Tell me if I'm right, tell me if I'm wrong. The Philadelphia Eagles offense, Nick Sirianni and Shane Steichen was cooking Spagnola. Jonathan Gannon got out coached. You know what? And we're going to talk about this. We're going to talk about this, you guys, because this show is far from over. Far from over. We got about 40 minutes left in the show. I'm going to hold it down with you guys. I don't have a guest today because I need you guys to feel me. I don't have a guest today because I want you guys to feel me and only me today. This is going to be a master class of epic proportions. Okay? So this is what we're going to do. We're going to take our first break in the, our first break of the morning. I'm your guy, Tone DeShields II from Good Morning NFC East, holding it down for my guy, Jeff Kerr, who's still in Glendale, Arizona, reporting on this unfortunate loss that the Philadelphia Eagles have taken by the hands of the Kansas City Chiefs. Continue to lock in, smash that like button. This is Good Morning NFC East. I'm Tone DeShields II. We'll see you right after the break. Don't go 